Well, no, I don't think the worst is over, but I think there's certainly opportunities here, Scott. I was going to bring a, a cautiously bullish fun tilt to the program, but Brian B uh, Belsky beat me to the punch. I'm, I'm optimistic, but I'm not sure I'm that optimistic. What, what makes you optimistic, if not as much as Mr. Belsky is? You know, I think there's opportunities when you see pullbacks like we've seen. The, the Nasdaq, even now after today's close, is 25 percent from its high. Last Thursday, inner day, and you brought it up earlier, we saw the S&P down 19.5 percent, which is basically a bear market. So when you see things like this happening, the active manager is going to look for opportunities. You know, valuations, fundamentals matter here. And we've got to be careful about looking at a bull bounce and think that it's an all-in rally. And we learned that today. I mean, it hit us right in the face with the comparisons between Walmart's earnings and Home Depot's earnings. It's a question of really importantly selecting stocks that make sense in mm. this environment. So you're I, no longer I, in I, Walmart, I want to be but you are. Yeah, I, I hear you. And forgive me for, for interrupting you. Um, you're no longer in Walmart, but you've been adding to Home Depot. <clears throat> yeah, I think we were a little early getting out of Walmart, Scott. We did it in March. But our thesis was that if inflation was going to be as high as it's been for much, much longer than we thought, unfortunately, the first persons that are hit are their consumer base. You know, the lower end consumer takes the punch of inflation first. And we saw that with Walmart. Home Depot continued to do well. I think they will. You know, there's a thesis against it that higher rates are going to make it difficult for refinancing. But I think home improvements are incredibly powerful. The stock's down 30 percent from its high. The valuation still might be a little tough as we get compression in here. It's a position you want to build into. But it's got a really strong dividend. It's got an incredible dividend growth. And I think we'll see similar numbers out of Lowe's. You like Cisco as well? Old school tech, you know, old and ugly. Strong dividends, another stock that's down 25% from its high. Cisco has a 10% compounding dividend growth. Past 10 years, you've been getting a raise of 10% each year just owning Cisco. So from a valuation standpoint, uh, I think it's still undervalued. But all these names, you've got to be very, very careful because we're not out of it. This isn't a, a V correction where everything just magically got better on Thursday. Joe just yeah. talked about a bottoming process, and, and those take time, and, they're, and it's going to take so a long time. Covered calls on, on top of those, uh, hedging your risk a little bit as, as usual? Absolutely, especially when you see volatility like you did last week, Scott, over 35 I mean, it's a great opportunity to harvest that volatility. The argument against it is you, you forfeit some potential upside, uh, but I'll, I'll forfeit a little upside for, for quite some time in this market. Harvesting yeah, volatility buffers the downside, and that's what I care about. All right. Yep. I know, I know you do, uh, and you do it well. Uh, that's Kevin Simpson.